Good morning for colleagues in Europe and good afternoon for colleagues in China. I'm Ma Jinxing from China Sea Institute. It is so great seeing all of you together again on the Zoom. Before this time, we have several lectures for colleagues in Europe and China. Today, we invite Professor Dr. Chen Xin to the lecture on the topic of prosperity through development. I think that most of participants have met Professor Chen Xin before. Well, I also want to make a short introduction of him. Uh, Professor Chen is the Deputy Director of the Institute of European Studies in Chinese Academy of Social Science. He is also the Executive President, as well as the Managing Director of the China CE Institute in Budapest. He is one of super scholars who focus on EU-China trade and the economic relations, uh, European economy study in China. As I know, Professor Chen also has a deep relation with EU and also Hungary. He studied at Peach University in Hungary in the 1980s, and from 2007 to 2008, he was appointed as the Chinese co-director of the EU-China European Studies Central Program. I think this lecture must be very impressive based on the speaker's wonderful experience. So now, Professor Chen, it's your floor. Thank you, moderator. Thank you, Jingxing. Uh, it is my great honor <coughs> and pleasure uh, to uh, share some uh, uh, thoughts uh, on my recent research work. Uh, actually, the topic uh, is on the Chinese uh, development. And uh, here I would like to uh, call uh, some... Uh, uh, okay, uh, there will be three parts uh, for my uh, talk. Uh, I will start uh, with the uh, Chinese experiences in the recent economic development. And then I will try to talk some uh, future challenges we are facing. And uh, at the end, uh, we try to uh, select some examples for the opportunity for uh, cooperation. Actually, there are uh, a lot of examples for different countries for their uh, de development. Uh, for example, for Germany, uh, as it is very famous for its social market economy. And uh, the father of the social market economy uh, has a very uh, classic book uh, on the uh, German model. So uh, in Germany, it calls uh, the Hochstandwiller, and its English version uh, titled "Prosperity from Competition." So that means the competition is the core the spirit uh, for the social market economy, and. Uh, here, I'm thinking about China's pattern, uh, how we uh, get developed, uh, going to the development and how we can uh, keep the growth and how we can reach the prosperity. So we think uh, that maybe the spirit for the uh, all the main uh, uh, um, uh, title or, or the main line is uh, uh, development, that is the core for Chinese uh, pattern. Why I'm talking about uh, the development development as the core for the uh, Chinese uh, uh, growth uh, uh, model. Uh, in my understanding, China is the only big power in the world uh, whose development is based on its own peaceful path. So if we are looking back, not too far away, 200 years. And we can see some of the country, when they started to develop, they get the way on the colonization, on the war, or some of the country or the bloc try to export ideology and try to get the uh, uh, extra benefits. But uh, this is not the case for China. The China's uh, growth path is based on uh, the development. And I think this is the biggest contribution to the world uh, uh, development. So this is the characteristic for China. Uh, 
So how can we analyze this or understand the China's uh, development? I think uh, uh, the main approach maybe is on um, the economic side. So we call it economic integration from total, uh, especially the globalization. So as, uh, so I'm working at the Institute of European Studies. So when we study the Europe, especially the European economic integration, they used to say that uh, the factor mobility is very important. And uh, especially for four kinds of factors. So commodity, labor, service, capital, and if all of the four factors can be mobilized in the integrate, integrated area, then it can create the maxi, uh, maximum efficiency and then the productivity, and it can uh, lead the way for the prosperity. I think for China, it is the uh, similar cases. Uh, so, but the situation is different. So European economy uh, or the European economic integration is mainly based uh, or focused on Europe. So they try to, uh, to, to build their internal market, uh, try to uh, make uh, uh, the, the internal uh, in uh, integration stronger. For China, the case is the globalization. That means uh, we try to uh, catch the wave of the globalization and uh, 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 utilize the different kinds of opportunities provided by the uh, globalization, especially uh, for the factors such as uh, the community, labor, service, and as well as captors, uh, as capital. So, uh, this is the <clears throat> graphic on the uh, 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 China's uh, 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 the one of the figure for the China's uh, growth. So we choose uh, uh, the trade, especially uh, as uh, Europe EU is one of the China's major trading power. So it can it could be a very good good example to show how China uh, uh, grew up. So if we are looking back in the 1990s, the trade volume between China and Europe started growth, but uh, with a very moderate uh, rate and volume is uh, at also at uh, uh, some moderate uh, uh, volume, uh, especially in the mid um, the, uh, 1990s, um, when uh, China uh, 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 introduced uh, the foreign trade law. So that means uh, uh, we, as we were in the reform and open up process, uh, at one time we uh, uh, try to set up a lot of reform uh, measures in, uh, in the domestic markets. And at the same time, we try to open up, uh, attract more investments. And uh, at the same time, we try to sell more products uh, via trade. Uh, as you know, in the beginning of the reform and opening uh, process, uh, Chinese economic development was at a low level. The per capita, per capita, per capita GDP was very low. Although we tried to uh, 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 stimulate the market uh, uh, incentives, but the, at that time, the size of the market and as well as the consumer power uh, was very limited. Mm -hmm. So domestic markets or the consumption for the domestic mar market is very, uh, at that time was weak. And at the same time, uh, the trade can provide uh, the actual opportunity. So after China had the accession to the WTO, uh, that means China uh, involved into the world market and embraced the globalization. The situation was totally changed. Uh, so from this figure, we can see that uh, the trade volume had been increased uh, dramatically. So that means trade had provided a very important impetus for the Chinese economic growth. 
And uh, this is uh, uh, how China can stimulate the capitals and the different kinds of resources for the further development. And, uh, and the trade provides, uh, I think, as I remember, in one of the EU's uh, documents, it says trade leads uh, uh, prosperity. Uh, it is also true for China. And based on the benefits from the trade, and we can accumulate the capitals for the further investment. Uh, and the government also can get more resources uh, for further planning and uh, the infrastructure work. So this is the uh, benefits from the uh, globalization and especially uh, from the value chain. Yeah. So uh, the Chinese economic growth exactly as the parallel uh, with the uh, labor uh, division of the, or the technological division of the uh, value chain. So in the early, uh, years after China had accession to the WTO, we roughly, we say we had uh, an, uh, just the similar cases as the other Eastern Asia economics. So uh, we import parts and assemble in China, and then we export to United States and the European Union, or to, to the developed countries. And at the same time, so we have the trade deficit with uh, uh, East Asian economics, and we had a trade plus with the developed <coughs> uh, economies in the world. But as time being, when China uh, has more and more resources, so we started our own uh, technological uh, laddering, so uh, development, and uh, China has been further involved into the value chain. And it can, so from the right side of the graphic, we can see it, uh, the this very simple trade trade model had been changed to a very comp compl complex uh, uh, trade network. And uh, so the, it means China had been uh, deeply embedded into the uh, global uh, value chain. And uh, it provides benefits China for China, and at the same time, it also provides benefits for the other trading partners in the located in the value chain. For example, for Europe, we also export uh, semi uh, products or parts, and then the European companies uh, use them, assemble them, and make the final products to export to the other uh, uh, trading partners. So it. Uh, created benefits for all of the uh, chain partner. So that's the uh, meaning of the uh, global uh, value chain. And uh, so based on this uh, uh, second big economy, uh, and uh, 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 America uh, still the first one, and uh, in last year, so 2021, China had surpassed the European Union, so in year 27, and became uh, the second largest economy in the world. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the story for the uh, global uh, value chain and uh, globalization and the trade. But uh, this is at only one side uh, uh, of the uh, Chinese economic growth. And uh, there is uh, the, some other parts. Uh, for example, the, the role of infrastructure, it takes a very important role in the Chinese economic development. So as Chinese used to say, if you want to develop, uh, build the road first. So no infrastructure, no FDI. <clears throat> uh, actually, the infra infrastructure idea is not invented by the uh, uh, Chinese people. Uh, it uh, starts from the World Bank, World Bank projects to China. And uh, uh, so uh, they pro provided loans for the highway construction in China. And uh, for the Chinese uh, people, they quickly find the, the, uh, 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 the, the benefits from the infrastructure construction. Uh, for example, it uh, actually it is uh, like a chicken and egg story. So you have some certain capital on the money where you would like to invest. So you, you can invest into a hospital or school where it's very poor. 
And uh, also, you can invest into the infrastructure, build the road where the, all the, uh, the local uh, is also very poor. And if you choose to invest to the roads, then you build the road, and then you can attract the FDI, the investors, more investors to the manufacturers, and the investors produce, uh, product, uh, produce products and then export, so sell the products. Then the uh, local government can get the taxes, and that means the local uh, government has the uh, revenues, then the local government, government can make further investment or into the schools or the hospitals or the other social uh, institutions. So this is one kind of solution. And the other solution, you have the money in a poor region and developed region. So you start with the investing to the schools. You train, you improve the situation for the education. But after then, the children, they had received a good education. They leave, they, they leave home and they go to the other richer or developed regions. So that means uh, the investment for the schools, you, uh, uh, the, the return uh, from the investment uh, could be very poor. And uh, sure, it is a very hard discussion on which uh, the eggs first or the chicken first. But uh, if I have the chicken, then you can get more eggs. Uh, so this, what, what the Chinese are doing is uh, we choose the investment into the infrastructure and try to based on this and get uh, attract more uh, investors. That's why when China, uh, after China's accession to the WTO, uh, China had attracted massive uh, foreign investments into to the Chinese coastal areas, and uh, uh, because we we started uh, the massive construction uh, at the coastal area, and it get the uh, returns. Uh, and the also another role for the characteristic for the Chinese development is the role of the government, especially uh, in the field of infra infrastructure. As we know, infrastructure could not be a market uh, <coughs> uh, um, no, because uh, in investments into the infrastructure, it requires a longer time and a slow return. <coughs> so it means uh, for the capital, they does not necessarily select uh, the, uh, uh, or make the decision to go to the infrastructure. And here, the role for the government can, uh, so the government can take the role for the infrastructure work. Uh, starting from the planning, uh, financing, and also it is a, a public goods. Uh, why am I mentioning planning? It is very important. We, if you build, so if we have three cities nearby, each other among the three cities. If one municipal government choose build the roads and the other city choose investment go to the school and the third one choose the, their decision to, to, to hospital. Then for the first one who choose the investment go to the infrastructure, they will suffer because they build their own roads and cannot get connected with the others and uh, the return would be very, very slow, and even uh, uh, deficit could uh, so collapse. But if we have planning, all the three cities among uh, neighboring cities, they decided to build the roads together and get interconnected, then the efficiency can emerge because it can provide the maximum uh, efficiency for the investments and attract more uh, investors or more capitals to go to all of the three cities. So this is the role for the government and the market cannot uh, take this role. We know in Europe, uh, they also have the planning for their uh, infrastructures. They have their road uh, planning for the railways, etc. The question is, the problem is uh, maybe 
the efficiency. So they have the plan, how to realize the plan, how to implement the plan, and how to finish the plan. This is the big question. As we know, time is money. If the process would be very slow and the different cities have different, that means uh, the efficiency, the time is also uh, of the efficiency. If we have the plan and uh, we implement the plan and we finish the plan in a uh, 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 short time, then the investment into the infrastructure could uh, provide uh, uh, return. If the process is too slow and some parts had been invested and the other parts had not been decided yet even, then, then the investment, those who had invested into the infrastructure, the efficiency would be very, very low. So this is the big issue. So uh, implementation is very important. And also the financing. Uh, as I said, uh, infrastructure cannot rely on the market. So uh, some kind of uh, financing from the government, it is very important. Uh, at the same time, infrastructure used to require um, big money and uh, uh, only rely on the market is impossible. So that uh, uh, means the government can take some of the role. And also it is a uh, public goods. <clears throat> So infrastructure, if we build the road, I mean, the, uh, uh, the benefits cannot uh, uh, present it on the return. Return is one, as one side, and the other side, there, are, there would be a lot of spillover effects. So into the infrastructure, uh, finish the infrastructure, then more capital come and uh, more production. And that means uh, more uh, tax uh, for the local government. And then local government can have more uh, resources for the further investment into the social area like the uh, schools, education, the housing, the, the hospital, etc. So all of these are the public goods and uh, it can be uh, represented uh, of the uh, spare over. Uh, in fact, this is a role for the uh, government. And based on these uh, experiences, so in the short uh, time, uh, like uh, 20, 30 years, uh, China had uh, uh, established uh, a well-founded uh, 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 highway uh, Reuters uh, out of the China. So here is the map for China, uh, for China's highway. So by the end of last year, uh, in China, uh, we have uh, more than uh, 160 kilometers for the highways. And for the roads, we're talking about more than 5 million kilometers. So based on these uh, highways, the uh, community mobilization can be accumulated, stimulated, and encouraged. And uh, this is the uh, one of the uh, conditions for the uh, Growth. And uh, also, uh, based on this highway construction, the technology is, uh, uh, had been developed very quickly. So at the, we can see that in nowadays in the world, China has the uh, uh, most of the well-found uh, uh, technology for the bridge building or for the tunnels. So here are some maps uh, or the pictures for the, some projects. On the lower side, left side, it is a, a bridge on the sea. So uh, total uh, 36 kilometers. It is uh, at the uh, uh, Hangzhou uh, urban. And uh, the other uh, picture is in the mountain, the highest bridge in the world. It is uh, uh, with uh, more than uh, 500 uh, meters long. And uh, it uh, required investments for more one billion RMB. So these are the <coughs> uh, uh, some projects for the uh, highway. And also there is another very famous project which uh, connect uh, Hong Kong, uh, Macau, 
and uh, two high, uh, three uh, big cities. So, uh, and it we use the technology, not uh, uh, only the bridge, but also the tunnel. So we can see the, the there is part for the tunnel and uh, all the bridge uh, all together, two parts for the bridge. And all together we have 55, uh, 55 kilometers. And with this uh, huge project, we can collect, uh, connect all the three cities and uh, we can promote the further integration of all the three cities in the region. That means the uh, urban, uh, the Pearl River uh, Delta region, uh, which is one of the dynamic uh, uh, region of the Chinese economy. So this, uh, another is about the uh, high-speed train. Uh, this is the uh, figures for the uh, growth of the uh, kilometers of the uh, Chinese high-speed train lines. Uh, the project uh, started from the 2003, and by the end of the last year, uh, we have more than 40,000 uh, kilometers for the high-speed train lines, uh, in which 40%, uh, more than 40%, is the very high speed with uh, 300, uh, 350 kilometers uh, per hour. And uh, uh, one third, more than one third uh, with the speed for uh, 250 kilometers per hour. And uh, more than one fifth with the speed for the uh, 200 kilometers, which are mainly intercity lines and uh, uh, some mixed lines. So these are the uh, high speed train lines and at the moment. 空中屏幕看见吗？啊，可以看见了，看得见PPT。Okay，sorry。Okay，sorry the biggest uh, population in the world and uh, soon will be surpassed by the India. <clears throat> so that means we, <clears throat> uh, the passengers, there is a lot of uh, uh, requirement, a big, huge requirements for the travelers, for the passengers. And we, we have the railway, but the railway uh, will, uh, so railway cannot afford at one time to deliver the goods, to transport the goods and at the same time, they also deliver the passengers. So this is too uh, huge uh, uh, burden for the railway. So that's the reason why China started, decided to develop uh, the high-speed train uh, network. And uh, it uh, provides uh, uh, very uh, uh, convenience for the travelers and also encourages the mobility for the people, for the, uh, for the, for the labor force. So this is <clears throat> uh, the meaning for the high speed train. And same time, we uh, started a massive uh, construction on the airports. So by the end of last year, we have close to 250 airports in 244 uh, cities in mainland China. So we, for example, in Beijing, we have two uh, airports, Shanghai also two, and they are starting the started plan with the third uh, airport. Chengdu city also has the two. So, so the air traffic uh, uh, provides uh, also the opportunity for the uh, uh, travelers and the mobility of the people. And here are some uh, pictures of the uh, new airports uh, constructed in the recent years. So it shows the uh, totally the uh, new one. And also ports, sea ports and the river ports. So according to uh, a report uh, by the Shanghai International Shipping Institute uh, uh, published uh, in, in March of this year, so global ports to uh, 2021, uh, to in the last year, in the big 50 ports, China uh, takes 28 in terms of the turnover. And uh, in, the big in the big 40, uh, big 20 
uh, 16 Chinese ports uh, take the place. And among them, 10 are located at the Yangtze River Delta region. And uh, in terms of the turnover, so not a container, in terms of the turnover, uh, all big five are Chinese, uh, like Ningbo, Shanghai, uh, Tangshan, Qingdao, Guangzhou. So Singapore, if in terms of the container, uh, Singapore takes the second one. So all of the ports shows how the big trade volume could be, <clears throat> and uh, that's the it, it can explain why more than 100 uh, countries in the world as the biggest trading partner for China. So this provides the <coughs> uh, map, a picture for that. And also a a, an area uh, less people are talking about, it is about the uh, navigation system. So without the GPS and without the European Galileo, and also there is a Russia system. And for China, we have our own Beidou uh, navigation system. And uh, the first uh, uh, phase had been implemented in 2000, internet, in, in, so in the uh, start of this century, and started for the Chinese service. And uh, Beidou too, so the second phase, had been started in 2012. And uh, two years ago, so in 2020, the Beidou uh, steps into the third phase and it uh, started to provide a, a service uh, globe wide. So actually, this is the second largest uh, uh, global uh, navigation uh, system. And we saw together 55 satellites. Uh, <coughs> And one of the characteristics for the Chinese uh, uh, navigation system is that it is not uh, on, only uh, provide the location. So passively, one channel. So it is two channel, interactive. If you are a ship and you have some problem and you can send a text via the Chinese Baidu navigation system, for example, SOS. Then the uh, center can receive this message and then can coordinate some uh, rescue uh, uh, measures to help uh, the ship. So this is uh, uh, invention for Chinese uh, navigation system. So it is not one way, it is interactive with the uh, text message sending. And uh, it, it is very useful uh, for, for the uh, users of the Beidou uh, navigation system. Nowadays in China, in the mobile phones, we uh, actually uh, uh, installed uh, not only the GPS uh, chips, but also the Beidou navigation system. So in some places, if the GPS that doesn't work, then the Beidou can replace them and uh, continue the navigation. So, and uh, also in the recent years, China had started a massive investment into the EVE infrastructure. We call the uh, new infrastructure, uh, like the uh, 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 internet, internet of things, artificial intelligence, uh, virtual reality, uh, 5G technology, and uh, big data, uh, smart city, etc. So for the uh, these projects, it requires uh, the very solid e infrastructure, and now we have a broadband. So in China, we have broadband success more than 1 billion uh, access hub. And uh, with uh, uh, more than 50, uh, close to 55 million kilometers of fiber cable. And uh, so also uh, close to 10 million set of mobile uh, base stations. So it, uh, it established uh, the whole countryside, countrywide uh, uh, e infrastructure, <clears throat> and it is also a very important part for that for Chinese uh, development, and also the internet penetration rate. Uh, uh, this is the figure for the China by the end of the last year. So net has more than one billion, and uh, so uh, more than seventy percent in the city, and close to thirty percent in the countryside and the internet penetration rate is more than uh, 70s. Uh, electricity and the water supply, it is also import very important. Uh, uh, so we know if you have a factory, 
you have no power station, so you have no electricity, you cannot uh, produce. And if you, uh, in the shortage of the electricity, you cannot attract uh, investors uh, to come. So uh, electricity uh, is very important. So, uh, and uh, traditionally we use the coal and uh, I think in two, two years ago, uh, the Chinese president, she had announced that we will have no more uh, coal uh, power station. And we will turn to the clean technology with the uh, technology on the wind and the solar. Uh, these are the pictures also for the in the Yunnan province, how the solar panel uh, had been settled in the mountains and it provides uh, the uh, uh, energy and uh, electricity. Also the uh, water uh, 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 supply. Uh, <clears throat> so last but not least, uh, e-commerce. It is a very dynamic uh, area in Chinese uh, economic de development, uh, not only for the domestic market consumption, uh, also for the cross-border e-commerce and uh, the trading figures. And so I will not repeat for that. And there are also some uh, companies uh, dealing with the uh, uh, e-commerce. Uh, for example, uh, the TikTok, uh, it is not an entertainment app. In China, it is also working for the e-commerce. Some of the uh, TikTok uh, uh, owner, they present uh, the products and promote uh, the sales. So it is so this is a very uh, special characteristic, uh, characteristic in China. Uh, there is an analysis between the Chinese TikTok and the British TikTok. They find that for the, in Britain, they mainly for the entertaining using the TikTok. And uh, uh, people are not used to uh, facilitate the e-commerce but uh, and e-sales. But for China, it is a very widespread uh, practice for promoting the sales via the TikTok. Uh, so based on these uh, developments, it uh, have the uh, impact for the uh, income improvement and also the reduction of the poverty. And so uh, last year, China had announced that uh, we had uh, uh, made more than 700 million people uh, get, rid of, get rid of the poverty. And uh, this is the biggest contribution for the uh, for the world, <clears throat> and also for the uh, uh, counter uh, poverty. Uh, these all of these are the uh, achievements we had been reached, but uh, uh, and uh, this is story for the past, and what's for the future? The future is very challenging because the uh, world situation had been totally changed. So the geopolitical turmoil had been uh, happened and encouraged it here or there. So globalization turned to the deglobalization. Supply, supply chain had uh, been faced uh, the uh, lack of the supply and have to stop. And all of this occurred in efficiency for the traditional trade, either the trade or the uh, uh, value chain or the supply chain. And uh, it is a big question, uh, how the nation can keep the right for the development. So the companies suffered because the costs are increasing and the consumer also suffers because they buy the bills based on the inflation. And so these are the nowadays picture and geopolitical uh, uh, came back. So what's for China? China, I think uh, China is still on the track for the development. China still keep the right for the de development. And we promote uh, the uh, 
uh, try to get more people to benefit from the Chinese uh, economic development. But at the same time, we also need to consider about the security. As the second largest economy, you cannot uh, get rid of the security. So if you only develop and does not care the security, uh, some of the country or the power will have their ways to try to stop the China's development track. So this is uh, nowadays the situation. But uh, in my understanding, China is a peace loving country and uh, our success is based on the peaceful development. And uh, so development still is our major cause. Just uh, some examples, uh, so chips. Actually, we rely on the uh, trading of the trade, chips. China is the biggest trade chip importer in last year with more than 400 billion US dollars. But some of the country try to uh, uh, limit it, the access for Chinese companies for some chips and even the technology for producing chips. So in this case, China need to consider how we can uh, provide the environment for the security, for the chip supply and for the supply chain and uh, for the uh, further uh, stay to keep on the track for the development. So we also uh, invest into the chip uh, production. And now together with Japan, China is the third biggest manufacturer in the world market uh, with 15% uh, uh, share. And US is the fifth largest one with 12% uh, share. So, uh, as we see in Europe, they also started the chip project, try to uh, uh, start with a massive investment into the chip industry. And America has just uh, approved uh, a law on the uh, a bill uh, on the uh, chip uh, development. So uh, it is a new situation for the further competition, but in somehow the uh, security, uh, we we try to uh, find some balance between the development and the security. The chip is one of the example. And also there are other fields for the future development like the uh, big, big data, artificial intelligence, uh, smart cities, uh, all of the other leading uh, f uh, fields for the further future development. Uh, here I would just like to mention one field the auto driving, automatic drive. The Baidu, uh, a big company in the IT sector, uh, after seven years development, they, uh, uh, they already developed a model uh, for the level four security. And uh, uh, it will, the car will be implemented uh, uh, so, uh, for use uh, next year. So for the left, left uh, uh, right side, there is a figure. It shows uh, uh, where the different companies uh, are located. So more uh, uh, Americans, Europeans, and as well as for the Chinese. So these are the uh, future uh, uh, area for the development. So then my last part, I will not uh, keep to my talk too long. Maybe you are very, already tired. Opportunities for the cooperation. As I said, China still remain on the track for the development because we had the benefit and uh, it is also the benefit for the people. As we used to say, serve the people, get the people to uh, enjoy the achievements from the growth. Uh, this is utmost important. So for the future, Cooperation, I would like to show some examples, make the things simple. Uh, I think uh, two weeks ago, there is a news in China. I don't know whether the, the, this is also a news in Europe or in the other parts of the world. 
So China had uh, three big uh, uh, airplanes, airplane companies. Uh, they announced that uh, they will uh, <coughs> buy Airbus. Uh, uh, so altogether, uh, 292 uh, Airbus with the value of close to 250 billion uh, RMB and uh, changed into the US dollar is uh, 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 somehow around uh, uh, 37 uh, billion US dollars. And the uh, delivery will be finished in the next uh, three to five years. So this, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, uh, a good news uh, for European uh, uh, so Airbus in China, uh, it uh, has their uh, reputation. And uh, also it is a good news for China because there are four several lines worldwide for the Airbus. So in France, in Germany, and in US, and also one of them also in Tianjin, China. So it means the, all of the partners can benefit from this deal so close to 300 uh, airplanes, Airbus. So this is one part of the story. And uh, several days ago, there is another news in China. It shows that uh, a new type, of, new type of airplane developed by the Chinese companies, we call the C919, had been uh, uh, approved and uh, with the uh, first uh, set of six uh, uh, pro uh, uh, protocol. And uh, they will get to study to use into use in the uh, near future. But uh, this project is in a full cooperation with the uh, American and US companies. Here's the names of the company. So either uh, with the uh, France uh, motor companies or the American uh, Honeywell the, the technology. So this is also shows that uh, China, as I said, China is a country with a big population and uh, there is a, a huge requirement, demand on the air traffic. So we buy three, almost 300 uh, Airbus, but at the same time, we, there is uh, also a market share for the future Chinese uh, uh, airplane. So that means, so opportunity is still on. It is not only for Chinese uh, aircraft producers, manufacturers, it is also an opportunity for the European uh, uh, aircraft uh, <coughs> manufacturers. So this is case of the airplane. And uh, here I would, I would like to mention two small projects in Europe. It is also show what kind of opportunity could be between China and Europe. So here is a, a bridge. I think uh, exactly today they will uh, get into the use. The bridge will be getting to the use uh, today. The bridge is located in Croatia. So here's the map for the uh, for the for the bridge and the, a picture of the bridge. The meaning is that uh, before they have no bridge, so when the tourists would like to go to the Dobrovnik, a very uh, 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 beautiful city for the uh, tourists, so they need to travel. Uh, pass the Bosnia, Bos, Bosnia Herzegovina uh, with some kind of 20 or 30 kilometers. And uh, they need to have twice passport check and a custom check. And uh, there is a long, usually in the season for the travelers, summer, there used to be a long line for the autos and waiting for the uh, boarding control. And uh, from today, they have the bridge. And uh, it means they go to the Dovlovnik, they will no longer 
to waiting the long auto line and the twice support check and they uh, freely in the Croatia, the tourists can go to the uh, uh, Topol of Dick. So this is the meaning. And uh, the bridge idea actually initially started in the 2007. And uh, during some up, upside downs and in the end, so there are some tries, but uh, failed. And uh, in 2018, there was a bid, and the Chinese company uh, had uh, won the bid. And uh, in four years, they finished the bridge project together with 18 consulting companies in Europe and uh, 45 uh, construction companies, and also in Europe, and uh, more than 100 global suppliers, uh, including uh, suppliers from Croatia, Germany, and Poland. So it is also an international project, uh, just uh, uh, coordinated and implemented uh, by the Chinese company. And also with the more than uh, 250 local employees. So this is also uh, shows that uh, a cooperation, how cooperation could be important. So the project, uh, the European Union had financed uh, uh, 85% for the uh, bridge and the Chinese company provide uh, the solid tech knowledge uh, to build the bridge within four years. And uh, the, not only Croatia, all of the tourists who visit Croatia, they will get the benefit from the bridge. So this is the means cooperation, how cooperation is important. And another story is about the <coughs> port of Piraeus in Greece. Uh, the Costco, uh, uh, <coughs> Costco is uh, 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 running the, the ports. And we already have the story that uh, how the turnover for the port had dramatically increased in the last uh, uh, eight uh, years. And it became uh, one of the uh, leading uh, ports in not only uh, in the direct or, or the Mediterranean, but also in uh, Europe. So this is a story we, we already had heard. But uh, there is another story that uh, the Costco uh, plan to build an automatic, so try to digitalize the port. And uh, with the uh, try to make the ports as one of the biggest full automatic container ports. So this is also uh, means that the Chinese companies not only invest, uh, reconstruct the port, but also try to show the uh, least uh, lead technology to share the technology. And after they finishing the project as the digital port, automatic container port, the pillars would be one of the biggest uh, uh, leading uh, port in the world. So this is meaning for the uh, project. So those are the small examples. So I think uh, there are a huge potential in the field for the co uh, of cooperation between China and Europe. It depends how the people uh, are thinking. So if the people are thinking in a way of the geopolitical thoughts and try to utilize the tools for the geopolitical or the uh, uh, for the geopolitical uh, uh, construction. So this is the one, th this could be one of the uh, situation. But in my understanding, it would be much bigger uh, future for the people in Europe and China, working together in cooperation and uh, uh, make the benefits for both of the people. So, so by the end, I would like to quote uh, a, a famous sentence from Deng Xiaoping. He says, development is the core. So ideology, the Cold War thinking, geopolitical thinking, it is uh, used to be uh, uh, manipulated, but uh, the development, that is the real thing which can bring the benefits uh, for the people 
and uh, as well for the uh, partners. Uh, for the development, it is very important that uh, uh, I think, uh, as I said, uh, the story we had passed, it means China had uh, benefited, uh, had benefit from the opportunity uh, provided by the world, so by the globalization. And uh, also China can provide opportunity for the world for the further development. So if more countries on the track for development and uh, the environment for peace and uh, for development would be stronger and more people can get benefited, especially for the countries who are in development. So developing countries and as well as for the developed countries, more and more countries on the track for development, the situation would be on for the peace for track. And if more countries on the track for geopoliticals, geop geopolitics, then it will bring to another end. So by the end, I quote another uh, famous sentence by the uh, President Xi. It calls rolling up, uh, rolling up sleeves and set to work. So good luck for everybody and uh, wish everybody living in a peaceful development way. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you for Professor Chen. Mm -hmm. There are some questions from our participators. Uh, you can see them in the chat room. The first question is about the digital dialogue. And the, okay, a new question. Uh, the second is, about the consumption uh, incre uh, increase demand. And there are still some questions about the global gate inactivity and the uh, shipment use or uh, cooperation with, with Russia in Antarctic, uh, uh, Arctic. Also the questions about the Uh, thank you very much. A lot of questions. I uh, try to uh, uh, answer of them. <clears throat> First question is about the EU-China high-level digital dialogue. Uh, the uh, two uh, from 2020, we had new two new pillars for the EU-China relations. One is on digital, the other is on the green. So the uh, green development and the digital uh, dialogue. Uh, all of tools, uh, uh, all, uh, for the both sides, they had uh, provide uh, 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 the, uh, enough energy to establish these two pillars. And then I think uh, the, uh, uh, for the green dialogue, it just had happened, and uh, I hope the digital dialogue will will uh, will continue. So, this uh, is my uh, uh, assumption. Uh, Second is about the second oh, about consumption. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Uh, the decrease in consumption. Uh, it depends from uh, which point of view to analyze the consumption. Uh, so I think uh, with uh, uh, They, uh, the consumer, the population, slowly the changed their move, uh, their 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 masses to uh, for the consumption. So with more and more, uh, for example, uh, less people go to the restaurant and uh, more people get the fast uh, uh, delivery. Uh, and uh, also less people go to the uh, 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 
big uh, uh, shops and uh, they buy online. So it depends. So in my previous uh, uh, chat, it is on the e-commerce. Uh, there is a, I had not mentioned the story. So uh, there is some e-shopping uh, moments, or we call the festivals uh, in China. One of them is uh, on the November 11. So single man, we call it the single man day. <laughs> single man, single woman. Monday, and uh, what to do? So the Chinese e-commerce uh, e-commerce company company uh, find a way try to promote them to shopping online, and they, they invented uh, November 11 day for the e-shopping, and as time being it's green very fast, and uh, more companies and more consumers get involved in. So there was a slide in, in the uh, in the in my uh, let, let's see where it is yeah 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 so at the right uh, figure you can see how big the trade volume how dy dynamic it could be for the consumption online it is only for the November 11. And after that, another, it is invented by the Alibaba. And another company, the Jingdong GD company, they, uh, they I think in the uh, May, May uh, 18, they also invite that day for their companies, also a shopping day. And it lasts for roughly one month, and it also gets the uh, big tenores. So it means the uh, uh, consumer the changing their uh, uh, habits for the uh, uh, for the decision for the uh, shopping, then the, they choose online instead of go to the uh, shops. So these are the some um, uh, changes. And in the future, I think at the same time, a lot of people invest their money into the housing. So uh, it means that uh, less money for the uh, consumption. I think in the future, it, one of the, uh, 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 as we, we, we said, uh, the, for the next 10 years, the main goal for China is try to improve the uh, 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 living levels and incomes for uh, ordinary people. So try to make more people living a decent life and uh, we call Gong Tong Fu Yu for common uh, prosperity. Uh, so in that means, uh, in that way, it means uh, uh, the consumption could be promoted if the uh, uh, people had been encouraged to get more income and uh, have their uh, <coughs> uh, uh, more choices. So in that sense, uh, more imports. Uh, could be required for the consumption goods. And uh, this is also a good use for the uh, European uh, companies. Then the next uh, question, global gateway initiative. Uh, I think uh, different countries had uh, initiated uh, uh, their own uh, projects. Like China, we had initiated Beard and Road uh, Initiative. So American, they have another name. And for the Europeans, now they have the Global Gateway Initiative. Different kind of initiative, I think one of the main goal is try to improve the conditions for the infrastructures. And so that means uh, it will provide a condition for the regions uh, they can in, uh, get the opportunity for the development. I think this is a good news. And uh, based on uh, uh, fair competition and uh, real work, I think it will uh, provide a benefit for the, uh, <clears throat> for the uh, uh, beneficiaries. Uh, so, uh, in somehow, um, for my understanding, uh, for Europeans, 
in the Global Gateway Initiative, the more focus would be on Africa. So it is uh, Africa important for the uh, Europe. If the Africa in the track of the development, it will provide uh, a huge potential opportunities for the global uh, uh, economy and uh, also improve their uh, uh, lives and uh, uh, decrease the risk of the migrants and uh, it is also can uh, have the uh, uh, a new opportunity for the European uh, as well as for China. Uh, about the Northern Sea Reuters, I'm, I'm not clear about that, so I cannot answer your question. Uh, Chinese economic success stories serve as a mirror for other nations trying to achieve more prosperity. Uh, very good question. Uh, as I said, what China has been done and what are doing, this is based on Chinese uh, conditions. So a lot of conditions, not only uh, for the domestic conditions, as well as the uh, external conditions. So, and also the, the uh, how to say, the China get the wave of the, uh, when the supply chain started to spread, especially on uh, Eastern Asia. So if we are looking carefully about the initial times when China grew up, it is a, a same story of the other East Asia economics, like uh, three, uh, four dragons, uh, four tigers. So they received the technology from the uh, the other economy, uh, import parts, assemble them and sell them. So it is the same story. But what is different for China is that uh, China is huge, and China has a very solid uh, uh, labor force on the engineering. And uh, also China has a huge domestic market. That means for the FDI, they go to China, they not only to re-export, they also focus on Chinese market. So this is situation is totally different as the others. Uh, but what China has been done, I think we share the experience, but we call the attention that uh, it is based on our own conditions and it does not necessarily uh, uh, the others can automatically apply. So it is mainly based on their own conditions. <laughs> Suggest a major suggestion for the economics and the policy makers in developing world uh, is a big question. I cannot suggest them. <laughs> but I think uh, uh, stability is very important. So if we, as I said, uh, the planning, the government role, all of this means the stability. So if the government is unstable and uh, changes and changes, no plans, and uh, it is very difficult to achieve the targets. And without uh, uh, infrastructure, you, it is very hard to attract uh, the FDI. This is uh, my <clears throat> estimation. So a stable uh, government, it means it shows a stable investment uh, environment and uh, it, it is, can show the confidence for the investors. Then you can attract uh, more. And, uh, but the other part is how you can be part of the global value chain of the supply chain. If, let's say example, Germany dominate the European, in Europe, the supply chain and uh, uh, the value chain. If you are too far away from the Germany, 
the geog geographically, that means extra costs for the transport and uh, to be involved in the uh, uh, supply chain. So location is also one of the uh, issue, but uh, it depends. So the uh, weakness of the geographic does not necessarily uh, prevent the opportunity for the development. So one of the story is the uh, railway, China Europe Express Railway project. So you started, the idea started from Chongqing city, a uh, mountain city in Western China. So it is very difficult for them to choose the paths for the development, but they uh, had the idea, they tried to persuade the ICT companies to invest into Chongqing because they have very, very low labor costs. And uh, they initiate a railway project. So that means the ICT products, they assembled in Chongqing. And uh, via railway, they transport to Europe. The costs would be lower than they used to locate it in the uh, sea part, so coastal part. Because for the ICT products cannot be shipping. The humidity, longer delivery. So we used to say every three months, there is a technology upgrade. So if we are the shipping one month on the sea <laughs> and uh, uh, one month in the factory and one month in the shop. So it is too long, the process. But, uh, uh, and uh, they used to use the airplane cargo air cargo. And the uh, railway, it is just at the balance of the air cargo and the shipping. So sea shipping. Because it uh, requires less time comparing with the sea shipping and uh, less costs comparing with the air cargo. And uh, it succeeded, attracted uh, uh, at ICT companies investing to Chongqing. And uh, they started rail project and they get the benefit from this uh, 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 idea initiative. So that means the weakness of the geographic does not necessarily means no opportunity for the development. It depends on the uh, think tanks and the policy advisors or the policy makers, they how to try to make the uh, find the opportunities and uh, make the solutions for the weakness of the uh, geographic. Uh, geography. Ah, climate change. I'm not the expert in this field. Uh, cannot talk too much about that. But uh, in my understanding, uh, one example is that uh, 10 years ago in Beijing, you can feel how polluted the air it is. But 10 years nowadays, so the air would be much cleaner than 10 years ago. So this is the, uh, uh, and somehow I think this is the efficiency for the implementation. If we have the target, we have the goals, and for the business sphere, they find the opportunity for the benefits, for the profits, then implement it then it is the Chinese way. So, CIA or China EU uh, will be signed. Uh, <clears throat> difficult question. The problem is that the business people, they support the CIA. But nowadays, it seems that the politicians are too much in a way, living in a way, but not in a real world. 
So they try to find some, I don't know how to say, ideas or concepts which does not necessarily true. And uh, they are going into their own self uh, realizing circle. So they provide a concept, uh, try to realize this concept into their own circle. This is the problem. But let me have examples. In the 1990s, a big story in the world that uh, China will collapse. Chinese economy will collapse. 20 years later, Chinese economy does not collapse and it became the second, second largest economy. And also there is a big story talking about if China develop, then the whole world will be in hunger, short of grain, no food. This is also a big story in the, in the media. But nowadays, China became the second largest economy. I don't think it has the huge impact for the food supply or the, for the food shortage. So the question is, you invent a concept, but you cannot realize. So you try to realize the concept, but they, at the end it shows that it's a misinformation. It's a fake news. It's a fake concept. Then what the politician would talk to their people, <clears throat> talk to their voters. So this is a big question. I think we go to the real world. We are on the track of the development. We find the opportunity for the cooperation. This would be a good benefit for the partners. But if the politicians choose to think of the ideology, the Cold War, this is another way. And they will lose the opportunity. So there is an example. You know the Chinese-American trading war. After four years, the US-China trade volume had been increased more than 30%. So real world is real world. But unfortunately, so we have our weakness. China, we have our own language. Not too much people knew the language, use the language. Not too much people know about what is happening in China. And they rely on limited English resources, rely on limited stories, we used to say, what is the news? If it is uh, very ridiculous, then it is a news. If we say there is some achievements for some good things, it is not a news. That's at least I, I'm learning from the uh, uh, courses in either American or the Europe. So this is a problem. If we are always rely on the newspapers, medias, because their main task is trying to crit criticize and get the, some uh, uh, unique <laughs> stories, and they treat the story as the picture of the whole China. And people, if people believe in that, then you will go to the, <laughs> I don't know how to say that. So the issue of the CIA is not on the business circle. It is on the politicians, how they decide. It is, there is a story. I mentioned the Beidou navigation system. I don't know whether you know about that uh, Galileo in Europe. So that's another navigation system. In the beginning of this century, there was a cooperation between China and Europe on the Galileo project. China had invested uh, the one billion or somehow money into the project. So there was a very good cooperation between China and Europe. 
And after then, American says, said to Europe, do not work, work with Chinese. It is dangerous. It is risky. You cannot with Chinese. And uh, the leadership in Europe, they believed that and decided, OK, finish the cooperation. And after then, China on the path of our own Beidou navigation system. And now we can provide the global services. And looking back at the Galileo in a slow space. And uh, so this is the story. And there is a double system. So if we work together, and uh, there will be more efficiency. So that's the story for the CIA. <clears throat> Uh, impact of the investment from China to CEC because of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, I think the, these are two stories. So European Union, they have their own internal market. And uh, the investors, they want to invest in Chinese investors. They used to think about uh, the internal market because of the size. And uh, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, uh, that's on geopolitics. And uh, I don't think it can uh, uh, hit the confidence for the investor. But then, but the thing is that uh, the problem is that uh, if the inflation in Europe going up, which bring the wages goes up, and the energy price is unstable, this will have the negative impact for the decision for the investors. I think uh, I try to answer the questions. And maybe I had already talked too much. <laughs> I want to make a supplementary about the Northern Sea Road. So, um, I'm not familiar with this topic. No. You, you, yeah. you have some idea? Yes, uh, I think the I, th I think if if the participators have the interest about the infrastructure cooperation in the Northern Sea Road, I recommend uh, that uh, China has a white uh, papers uh, on the Arctic uh, Arctic policies. Uh, it published in 1980s. Uh, I think uh, since that uh, the policy has no change. If uh, you have interest on it. I think you can re read it. So it's, it's my uh, supplementary. Is there, is there any question? Yeah, additionally, uh, just uh, two notes for the climate change. So China has the biggest capacity in the solar energy production. So as I showed in a picture in Yunnan province on the mountain, they have the solar panels. And uh, so this is one point. And second point is that uh, China uh, is, uh, well, now is the biggest uh, ETC, so emission trading system, ETS market, bigger than Europe. So, ETS had been invented by the Europeans, and in certain times, it all, almost collapsed. But in China, we in, so introduced this system and would be uh, one of the biggest uh, trading system, emission trading system in China. So these just two footnotes. From these two footnotes, you can see how uh, the China can realize the target for the climate changes. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, okay, thank you very much for the lectures and the response to the questions. As Professor Chen said, China's development with no war, no colonization, and no ideology export, this is really the biggest uh, contribution to the world development. So as closing remarks, I don't want to talk about it theoretically. I just want to share my, my feelings. My grandparents was born in the 1930s. They suffered from the anti-Japanese war, the Chinese civil war, the shackling. They were more than 60 years old when they enjoyed the initial prosperity in 1980s. And my parents' generation experienced the, the deep reform and the opening up of China. Also, there was no war, no lockdown, but the reform of state-owned enterprise, marketization of the medical service, employment, housing, education, and so on, were really painful for the common person. For my generation, the impressed is the speed of China's development. When I studied for my master's degree in 2008, I saw half of German classmates use smartphones. At that time, the smartphone is very few and uh, very expensive in China. However, when, when I was the doctor candidate in 2012, four fifths Chinese people around me use smartphones. When I was in Budapest last year, I brought uh, a 5G Permax uh, Vodafone mobile package. The basic fee is about uh, 6.5 oil. While the China mobile 20G Permax package is much cheaper, so only costs about uh, 8.5 oil. So at the same time, the digitalization has totally changed the Chinese people's customs, both for the young and the elder. So now very few people use cash in the supermarket and the hard copy tickets almost disappeared. It happens not only in the big city, but also in some small, so many small countryside. So if make spread, people can talk about more on the aerospace technology, scientific, explore, uh, scientific exploration in Arctic and Antarctic, and the mineral explorations on the continental shelf in Pacific Sea, and so on. However, the problems that are happening right now are more typical. So when the, the energy crisis and the high food uh, price sweep the whole Europeans. Uh, the price of the petrol is also increasing in China. However, there is no energy crisis in China. Maybe somebody will assert that the Moscow doesn't stop the cooperation with Beijing. Actually, there are mainly 15 countries export oil to China, and the, the Russian oil is only 15% of the total import of China. For the natural gas, China imported from 27 countries in 2024. Meanwhile, 60% was na were, were national productive. So when I'm back to the topic of Professor Chen's lecture, I want to say not only prosperity, through development, but also advancement through development. So it, uh, it's my closing remarks. Thank you for everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good to see you all.